Pope Francis has pleaded for forgiveness for the sins and failings of the church and its members during Rwanda's 1994 genocide, saying the violence had disfigured the face of the Roman Catholic Church. In a meeting with Rwandan President Paul Kagame, Pope Francis says he hopes his apology will help promote peace in the African country, which was torn apart by genocide in 1994, and contribute to a purification of memory. The Catholic Church in Rwanda last year publicly sought forgiveness for the part played by some of its members, who it said had fanned the ethnic hatred that led to the killings. Some massacres took place in churches where people who had sought refuge were killed by militias. Close to 800,000 people from the ethnic Tutsi minority as well as moderates from the Hutu majority were massacred in the 1994 genocide. Kagame, a Tutsi, led a rebel force to halt the slaughter. Zimbabwe's President Robert Mugabe has called for greater economic integration among African countries with the aim of creating a union of African states. Speaking at an African Economic Platform Summit in Mauritius, Mr. Mugabe added that regional groupings should work towards forming a much more united African Union. He also suggested calling it a union of African states with perhaps an authority called Government of African Union States. The rising wave of nationalism and populist governance around the world is one of the key discussions at the ongoing Africa CEO Forum in Geneva, Switzerland. Economists, government officials and business executives at the annual event agree that putting Africa first is the way for the continent to position itself in today's world of economic nationalism. The chief economist of Coopers in Algeria, and Andrew Nevin, told our channel's business editor, Bosin Amofai, that African business leaders must leverage opportunities and learn new ways of meeting emerging challenges of doing business. There's been a rise of na economic nationalism around the world, and the discussion is how can Africa get into this new conversation? What are your thoughts about this? Well, I get to host a debate here this afternoon about the subject, but I'll give you my personal view on it. I mean, I think that for Africa, what it should be is uh, not economic nationalism, but economic continentalism. So it's got to be putting Africa first. I think what's not going to work is if individual countries uh, come out and they say, I'm going to put Ghana first or I'm going to put uh, Mozambique first, because we're, a lot of the countries are quite small. We need to cooperate to create our markets, to build up the infrastructure, the regional trade hubs, all of those things. So, so I think economic nationalism has worked for a lot of places, it's worked for Korea very well, for example, for Japan. It can work for Africa, but only if we approach it as Africa doing it together. Do you think the European model uh, will work for Africa. You have small countries also across Europe. Do you think that should be a model for Africa? Well, I think in building up the trade and investment relations, I mean, everything's step by step. So we're not going to go from where we are today to all the barriers coming down. I think what has to happen is at a regional level, people build more confidence, they work with their neighbors. For example, the East uh, Africa uh, community, the economic community there. I think that's working very well. I think in West Africa, Lagos, where we're based, uh, we need to do more of it. There's the Abidjan Lagos corridor, a highway that's being developed. We need to have better borders between Nigeria, uh, Benin, Togo, Ghana, and Cote d'Ivoire, for example. But I think if we take those things step by step, we will see trade and investment at a regional level, and then eventually a Pan-African level will just explode. At what level do you think putting Africa first will really work from the political conversation or action? Do you think from the business cycle, from the foreign investment side, where do you think Africa can quickly uh, ramp up on putting Africa first? Where do you think the first step should be taken? Well, I think that the, you know, we, we've always looked at ourselves as a resource economy. So we dig out resources and we send them away. We don't add much value. So I think part of the Africa first is we need to add value. And of course, we have more and more people. So we need those resources ourselves. We need the oil ourselves to power our cars. We need the food ourselves to feed ourselves. We need the metals ourselves because we want to industrialize. And I think Botswana has done that very well, where they basically demanded that in the diamond industry, the value added is in Botswana. So they've executed the economic nationalist strategy very well. So I think the places to start are to say that you know, people can come and we need mining, we need agriculture, but those aren't enough. You have to actually have the downstream processing. Um, of course, the, the one thing, though, is we need to provide the power because what's held us up up to now is the lack of power. But I think that's going to get solved. And finally, do you think forum like this can help Africa have a new thinking 
new approach to the future of the continent and learning new lessons from what's happening around the world? You know, sometimes when I come to these events, I think two days away, you know, it's, it, it's, uh, it takes a lot of time. But whenever I come, you feel sort of energized. You meet so many people that are doing different things in different parts of Africa. They're then connecting up with each other. I, I go away feeling very optimistic. And if we make enough of these connections, we're going to make the progress we need. In Nigeria, the central bank has kept the main interest rates unchanged at 14%. The central bank governor, Godwin Emifili, told reporters that the Naira exchange rate with the dollar remains stable. The announcement comes after a two-day meeting which began in Abuja on Monday. The Monetary Policy Committee reiterated its resolve to continue to pursue financial system stability. To this end, committee and joint management of the bank to work with the deposit money bank to promptly address the rise in NPLs, declining asset quality, credit concentration, and high foreign exchange exposures. Committee also noted the benefits of loosening at this time, which will be in line with the needs of fiscal policy to restart growth. The MPC, however, noted that loosening will exacerbate inflationary pressure, worsen exchange rate, and further pull the real interest rate into negative territory. Since interest rates are sticky downwards, loosening may, ne may not necessarily transmit into lower retail lending rates. The committee noted the consecutive positive contribution of agriculture to the gross domestic product during the fourth quarter of 2016, a development partly traceable to the bank's interventions in the sector. The committee remains optimistic that if properly implemented, the new re released economic recovery and growth plan, coupled with innovative growth stimulating sectoral policies, would help fast track economic recovery. Committee's decisions. The committee, in consideration of the headwinds in the, in the domestic economy and the uncertainties in the global environment, decided by 9 out of 10 members to retain the NPR at 14% alongside all other policy parameters. One member voted to raise the NPR. In summary, the MPC decided to 1. Retain NPR at 14%, retain the CRR at 22.5%, retain the liquidity ratio at 30%, and lastly, retain the asymmetric corridor at plus 200, 200 and minus 500 basis points around the NPR.